Oh, hey, I, I didn't notice you there. Uh, I just happen to have my wireless lav mic on and I'm just enjoying the beautiful day uh, outside of my mansion. A typical thing for most, most artists. I've been thinking one of the ways that I got here was learning how to draw hair. And if you want to draw hair the way that I draw hair and the way that all of us multi-artist billionaires draw hair, follow this tutorial. <laughs> oh God, I'm so poor. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Uh, trying to grow a beard here. Back at it with another video. So we're gonna be talking about hair today. And I know hair is a topic that is actually pretty hard for a lot of artists, especially beginner artists to get into. But really, once you get a few basic things down, uh, it becomes a lot easier. It becomes a lot easier to draw hair. So follow me through this wonderful journey of imagination and I will blow your mind. Actually, I'm just going to show you how to draw hair, but uh, if you're easily impressed, I'm going to mind. So step number one in drawing hair is really paying attention to the hairline. And what the hairline is, is when you shave your head, that line of hair you can see around all, all this stuff, you know, like where your sideburns go and the, and the back goes and all, and all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about, your hairline. You know, you hear, you hear a lot about it in like, you know, Sitcoms? What are sitcoms now? Seinfeld. Oh god, that's old. Uh, Friends. Oh dear god, I'm dating myself here. Uh, you know Ross? Oh shit. Uh, so anyway, let, let's just, you know what, let's make up, let's make up a fake sitcom. Let's call him Gary Seinfeld. He, he's going bald. He's, he's having a hard time. He's having a hard time in his life, right? He, his, his hairline is receding. You hear a lot about it, like receding hairlines. What difference does it make? Who cares if she doesn't like you? Does everybody in the world have to like you? Yes! Yes! <laughs> everybody has to like me. I must be liked. That's a thing, and that changes as you age. And I'll show you some examples of that uh, here. And that is an example of how hairstyles and hairline shapes change as you age. Uh, so looking up reference for something like this is really, really important, but... The hairline is different for everybody, so it, it isn't just like it isn't just like whether you're male or female or older or younger. Like really, the hairline is pretty unique to each individual person. So that means when you're creating a character or even using reference or whatever, the hairline you notice you're gonna notice is pretty different when it comes from person to person, and that's totally okay. And it can make your character more interesting if you're designing one yourself. The hairline does change with age, so whether you're male or female, this does happen. You hear, you see it a lot more in males, but this can happen in females as well, and really it just depends on the design once again. One thing that seems to apply to everybody though, that I have noticed at least, is the hairline, the edges right here, that start right before the sideburns, the edges of them where they change shape seems to align with the edges of your eyebrows. And that's something that I've noticed just through drawing all these years, and that's a little pro tip. The hairline is gonna base a lot of what the future styles that you create for your characters are gonna be based off of. If you make the hairline drastically different, certain things like a mohawk may not look good on your character. Certain things like uh, a comb over may be appropriate for your character. You know what I mean? So you really have to take into consideration when you're designing a character or even studying a character that the hairline makes a very big difference in the future shape that you will give their furry helmet. That's not what you call hair. Never call that, never, never do that, never be like me. So now that we've moved on from the hairline, we're gonna move into hair styles. And when it comes to hairstyles, listen to me, listen to me, come here, come close, come close, right here. Always use reference for the love of God. If you don't use reference, most of the time it's gonna turn out pretty crappy. Like, you're trying to come up with hairstyles from imagination, and if you're not used to drawing different hairstyles all the time, unless you're, unless you're an artist who specifically deals in drawing hair all the time and coming up with new, fresh hair designs, it's probably a great idea for you to use reference, okay? Just do that for me, do it for me, and do it for you. One of the things I've noticed as well about drawing hair is, it seems like different styles, no matter how drastic, unless it's just literally you wake up out of bed in the morning and you go like this in your hair, it seems like the hairstyles are always dependent on where you choose to part the hair. So for example, if you part it down the middle, you're gonna get like a Trunks haircut from Dragon Ball Z. 
if you part it to the side, right, like right here, like on the edges, one of the edges, you're gonna get like a nice, a nice sweeping comb over, a la this right here. And if you shave the sides down on the sides and just leave it long in the middle, you're gonna get one of the more modern uh, Pidgeotto haircuts. And I can hear some of you right now going, Bobby, I don't need your reference. I got my own style. It's my own thing. I'm gonna create the newest hairstyle that ever existed, and it's gonna be the best thing ever. It's gonna blow anything you could come up with with your little pea brain out of the water. And first off, my brain is the size of a peanut, thank you. You think you're so damn special because you say God bless you? Well, I, I, I don't think I'm special. <laughs> my mother always said I'm not special. <laughs> And second off, just use the reference anyway, because at the end of the day, when you need to find out what's, you, you can use reference, combine things. You can, you can use different parts of the recipe, you can use different spices and, and seasonings to make a new recipe. You don't need to just come up with it out of your head. If you try to come up with it completely out of the, uh, out of the clouds, it's always gonna turn out worse than if you used reference. Just do, please. This is the second time I'm begging you. Just do it for me, just do it for me. What are you doing? What are you doing, Bobby? That's me. Just do it. Let's go into a little bit of a demo where I have a few different styles pulled up on reference, and I'll leave those references in the description below along with the PSD of this document that I'm working on so you guys can draw to your hairy delight. That sounds wrong. So here we got our, our bald-headed characters. They are feeling the breeze through their heads, you know, like you do, like you do. Uh, but we really want to get a hairline on these guys and I've already gone in and created a hairline and this once again is free for download in the description below. So if you want to check out what these hairlines look like, you can design some of your own hairlines. You can do various things with these characters, but I've created these bald, beautiful characters for you. So that way when you want to practice drawing different hairstyles, you don't have to go through the difficult task of having to draw a face first and at multiple angles because I love you. So the guy, so the character on the left looks pretty different from the character on the right, but I wanted to get the full gamut of like a more masculine look on the left and a more feminine look on the right. But the, but the hairstyle rules apply no matter what kind of head you're drawing. So I felt like 50-50 would be the best way to go. So we have a reference pulled up of our character right here, and I'm not going in to click it right now. I totally had the reference open. I plan ahead. Don't judge me. You're the you're the one who clicked on this video. What, what were you thinking? Okay, so our first reference is this like man like manly masculine manly man. Mats. The ones that match the seeds. I kind of went with that. I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. And he has a he has a pretty severe hair part right down right down the side right here, and we're gonna be mirroring that on this character who you can see has a very different hairline than the guy that we drew. So we are going to apply this hairstyle to this guy with a very different hairline. You'll see what I'm talking about. The style will look relatively different, but it's the, 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 hair, the hair will look a little bit different, but it'll be the same style. So the first thing that I generally like to do is I like to take the literal hair, like the literal line where the part goes in the hair and just draw it just like that, just like that. And then I'm gonna start using the reference and kind of mirroring where the shapes go and how everything flows. As you can see, it's almost like everything kind of flows from where the hair parts. And that makes sense, because when you're combing your hair, you're, all, you're pushing it in one direction. You're pushing it one way or another way. And you know there are some exceptions to this, but the general rule is that where the hairline is is where everything starts to flow from. So pay attention to that next time you're looking at some hair reference or trying to come up with your own. So we're going to take the hair, start going like this, sideways. We're, we're flowing from here this way. One little extra bonus pro tip, because I like you, you got, you got pizzazz. One more pro tip for this is make sure to always put your hair just a little bit above the skull because your hair is never going to, unless you're, you've been wearing like, a, like a, a, unless you've been wearing like a swimmer's cap or like a helmet all day long, your hair is not gonna be matted down onto your skull. It's gonna sit a little bit above the head because that's what we call volume. Anytime you go to get your hair cut and you hear the words volume, that's what they're referring to, is they're making the hair just a little bit more pfft. So we're gonna take that into account. We're gonna draw the hair just a little bit above the head. So we're flowing this way putting lines representing the flow of the hair. And it looks like the hair by the ear is flowing backwards a little bit, so we can do the same thing. We can just try, kind of trace our hairline that we've made right here and go from here back. Uh, 
and we can go from here backwards, here, backwards, backwards, backwards. And we'll do one more time, and something like that. Something like that. And it looks like the hair is generally shaved besides that, so we're just, we can just leave it like that. And then for the front facing hair, it's kind of going around, once again, like this. Boom. 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 And since we can't see the other side of the hair, I'm going to improvise a little bit. And I'm just going to end the hair strands here. And this is something that you can do as well. Just end the hair strands with a point. That's generally how hair works. And as you can see, through just a little bit of reference and a little bit of effort, we've got our hair looking like a fancy, a fancy dude right here, okay? We got our fancy dude right here. And one of the things I want to discuss while we have this hairstyle up is making the strands look more natural. So when you look at a reference, when you look at a reference of hair, it's very easy to get caught up in the details and go like line, 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 line. I want all the lines. Give me all the lines. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want to have a perfect balance between simplicity and detail. So what that means is, uh, let me draw just like a square right here. If I want a balance, if, I, if there's too much detail, it'll look like this. That's too many lines. That's too much detail. But if I step back and I draw just like one line, it's not enough detail. If I take that one line, maybe make another line like right here, and then I skip ahead a little bit instead of like, because this is this is too much like a pattern now. If I go back, just have these two lines next to each other, these two lines next to each other, and then maybe I just put one more line over here. This is what I would call a good balance between design and detail. So keep that in mind the next time you're having having trouble drawing hair or really anything when it comes to designing, a perfect balance between design and detail is really where you want to be. And while we're at it, let's take the same reference and try to turn it in our minds and draw the same thing from a side profile. We're not that we're not using different reference, we're using the same reference, but we're going to come up with it with our imagination. So we're going to draw the hairline like we did before, just like this. Or the uh, the the part line. We're going to draw the part line just like this. Okay? And using our reference, we're going to try to try to trick our eyes a little bit into, into seeing into imagining what it might look like turned. Okay? So look, once again, it looks like the hair is sitting above. Another technique you could use is like drawing the outline of the hair before you actually add the details in, and I might try that right now. So I'm going to do the outline like this, and it looks like the hair kind of goes up in this way. and kind of just makes a shape like this. And then on this side, it looks like the hair kind of just goes backwards like this and sits around. So now we have the outline of what our hair shape will look like, and now we can start adding in our details. But remember, it has to be a perfect balance between design and detail. So I put two lines here. Maybe one here would look good. Maybe two more right here. And let's just add one more right there for good measure, okay? Now it looks like the hair is curving around using perspective. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're just going to Now we're just going to Because the hair is coming from the middle. So remember, the hair branches out from here, not like here or here. It's coming from that part line. Boom. Let's add one more close here. And then one more like this. And there we go. That's what that hair would look like from the side. Next reference. And for this next hairstyle, I will be doing like a, a more feminine hairstyle, so that way we can cover both ends of the spectrum. So this is the next reference that I've picked, and once again, that'll be available down below. So we're gonna be applying this to both characters once again. So it might come off a little bit like the first character on the left is wearing a wig, but that's okay. Wigs are still hair. It's all good. Don't worry about it. So we have to do the exact same thing. And if you, if you notice, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say about the hair? Where is the hair coming from? You can see, you can look, I believe in you. I believe in you. The hair is coming from mm, the part line. So what that means is we are going to draw the part line first. That's generally what I do like 80% of the time. I draw the part line first. And then 
These sweepy hairstyles tend to actually be a little bit easier for me. You may have a different experience, but these tend to be a little bit easier for me uh, because they just kind of sweep down and you don't have to worry as much about like perspective. So let's draw this hair going down. And I think I'm going to start off with the outline idea again. I, I uh, Drawing the outline of the hair tends to be a little bit easier and adding the details in later uh, than doing the reverse of like trying to make the outline of the hair through details. Like start with silhouette, then finish with details. That seems to be what helps me out anyway. So draw the line down, go like this. See, I'm just putting little bits of detail in here, like the hair splitting, just to add some intrigue. And then it looks like, once again, the hair is coming off of the top of the skull. So you can add the part right here. And it looks like the shape just kind of goes down like this. Okay. And once again, it looks like there's a little bit of hair strand sticking out of the side, and I want to mirror that. So a good way to do that is kind of just make, make a bump right here, then go down, and then you can add the detail in later, something like that. See what I mean? And then it looks like the hair parts right where the hairline is on this side and goes down to where the ear is, just like that, okay? And now we can go up on this, now we can, now we can start adding details. So we're, we need to trace from the part back because I want this part of the hair to end, right? We can add little details in here and boom, like that. And then draw a couple lines. Boom, boom, maybe one more. Something like that. And then you can do the same thing on the other side too if you want, if you want. Draw a line like that, maybe one more. Something like that and you can do the same thing on this side too. Boom. Always check your work versus the reference and see if that's, if you're liking it. And once again, this is not the most fitting haircut for this guy, but that's okay. He's allowed to have whatever haircut he wants. So this is what the front profile of this hairstyle looks like, okay? And you can do little things, like they tend to do this a lot in anime where you can add like little strands of hair that sit outside of the detail. And that can help a lot in making your character, making the details look a little more specific or intentional. And that's always fun to do. So like little stuff like that, you can add like little offshoots, stuff like that. Anything you want, that looks weird, but the first one looked good. So yeah, just any little things like that can tend to help and make things look a little more lively and interesting. So let's do the same thing from this side. And what, And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to flip this hairstyle around for this view of the character. Because generally you're not gonna be drawing the hair from the side where the part isn't there. Because if the character is facing towards you and their hair is like this covering their whole face, that's not a very interesting angle to draw them from anyway. So let's draw them from the more interesting angle. We're just gonna have to flip that hair around almost like if they're like a mirror image. So we'll put the part right here. Once again, like this. And then the hair sits above, like always. Same thing on this side. And the hair, since we're flipping this, is going downward from about here. That's the kind of shape we're dealing with. And it looks like her hair tucks behind her, it looks like her hair partially tucks behind her ears and partially like goes above it a little bit. So this is gonna be a more intricate hairstyle for sure, but that's okay. So we're gonna start off with our outline again. Same thing, kinda add like a little bit of a part when it comes to this haircut. And then do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna choose to tuck this behind the ear and then make the hair on this side kinda sit like this. Okay something along those lines. And then we can do the same thing. We can add, and honestly, since the hair does go a bit above the ears, cause there's, you know, it's, it's long hair. So it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna, it's gotta follow the laws of gravity and you know, wind and all that stuff. So little bits are gonna be all over the place. So I'm gonna add like a little bit of a strand right here. Similar to the one we added to the top of the head earlier, but that'll just add a little bit of detail and interest. But then we'll take this, do a couple lines, couple lines couple lines. Same thing with this side. 
couple lines. Couple lines. Couple lines. Sort of like that. So now you can clearly see where the hairline is. You can clearly see where stuff is going on. You can even add a little bit of detail on this side if you want to give it like a little bit of a three-dimensional look for the hair. Okay. So little stuff like that can help a lot. So now you can now you can tell that this is a longer hairstyle and it has a little bit more shape to it. Now, obviously if I obviously if I had spent more time like really studying these hairstyles and really breaking them down, you get a better image and the same for you, same for anybody. If you spend more time using reference and really studying the hairstyles that you want to get down and get right, they're always going to turn out better. But this was just a little bit of a demo that I wanted to show you guys where it's not as difficult to draw hair as you think it is. You just have to pay attention to where the, where the part line is and where the hair goes in perspective and just add a little bit of detail and a little bit of simplicity into your life and to your hair and you'll be golden. Guys, I hope this tutorial has helped you out and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And you can remember, you can find all of the resources in the links below. Uh, you can find the reference I used and also the PSD is available for download so you can draw hair on top of it to your delight. My Discord is also linked down below so that way if you wanna post some of the work that you've done, maybe some of the hairstyles that you come up with, you can link those in our Discord as well. It's a lot of fun in there. And also you can find me streaming weekly on Twitch, Monday through Friday also in the link below. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. I will catch y'all later.